patience. The suffering of affliction, pain, toil, calamity, provocation or other evil with a calm, unruffled temper. Endurance without murmuring or fretfulness. A calm temper which bears evils without murmuring or discontent. That's Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And there's just tons other. And with that, and patience, something that I need work on, let's see what the Bible has to say about patience. And we got to go all the way to Psalm 37 for the first time for this word to show up. In Psalms 37, verse 7, we begin rest. What an interesting study that when we come to patience and the very first verse that we come across, the very first word of this scripture, rest. Mellow out. And I'm not just preaching to the choir here. I know what impatience is, and it's unresting. And it's a sin. Rest in the Lord, Jehovah. And when we and I lose my patience, I've stepped out of the Lord. Because at no time ever did Jesus lose his patience when he was here 33 and a half years on this earth. I've been on this earth 50 years, not plenty of time. Lost my patience after I've been saved. I've gotten out from the Lord. And wait patiently for him. For the Lord. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. He's coming. He'll come in his time. We don't need to date God. We don't need to push forward the rapture. Because those people that do set the days, those people do, you know, look at the earthquakes, look at the moon and the blood moon, look at all these things. They're just not patient. The Lord is coming. And we are not guaranteed that he will come when we're living. Because Thessalonians says, those who are dead in Christ shall rise first. You may die before the Lord comes. It would be nice to be living, but patiently wait for the Lord. Rest. Settle in the Lord on life's highway. And you're going to meet many obstacles in this world, and it's, it's going to try your patience. It's going to try your anger, your temperament. Psalms 40, verse 1. When it comes to a hospital stay, that tries patience. Who wants to be in the hospital? Who wants to see a loved one in the hospital? Psalms 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. Evidently, the writer of this psalm has a plea to God. And in his plea, in his prayer that God heard, he said, I waited patiently. And we saw a verse already, rest in the Lord and patience in the Lord. God is never, ever in a rush. He is never going to, how shall I say, when he's got a date for something, he's not going to move ahead of that date just because we are not willing to wait. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. 
you know, we're in a long line at the grocery store and we're getting aggravated. That's lack of patience. When you're hitting every red light, that's a lack of patience. The Bible says it's a sin. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. When you start something, you don't know what's going to end up out. At least when you get cl closer to the end, hey, I, you know what it turns out. Hopefully. And the patient in spirit. Patient in spirit. Is better than the proud in spirit. Pride is just an open sin as patience is a sin. I mean, impatience, excuse me. And if we were to have a choice between patience and pride, the Bible says patience. And yet pride can be one of those things, you know, just look how good I am. Look how wonderful we are. And I don't know how it is for all human beings saved or lost, but patience can also be hard. When you've got an impatient spirit and you got to struggle. When you are by yourself alone and no one interrupting, you say, God, I know there are sins in my life and I know that we do not have that perfect fellowship because of me. What are my sins that is interrupting you and me when patience is one of the top 10, top five? Patience is better than pride. And pride is a sin. God never says, I am proud of you. He says, well done. And he says, wait and rest. Luke 8, 15. Luke 8, 15. You got to settle down. Always agenda. Luke 8, 15. But that on the good ground are they. The sower's going out. He's thrown seed out. And there are several possibilities of that seed. And we're looking at the seed here that gets saved. People have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they are now planting seed. And that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Other Christians, growing other Christians and what's the patience with this one? There are some people and there are some churches and religions out there that they're impatient to say this prayer. Well, look, we got another 20 this week. To say this after me. We, we got the whole ministry, everybody came up and got saved. And in the impatience of going out and witnessing and spreading the seed out, where the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. It didn't tell us to grow the seed. It says, plant the gospel, plant the seed. The impatience of the ministry of hurry up, say this prayer. So look how good we are. Again, pride. We produce fruit that's not fruit, but weeds. And it looks like wheat, but it's a tear. And we give them a false hope. We give them a false salvation by say this prayer because I'm impatient to deal with you correctly. 
don't take the time. There are many people I've dealt with. Open Bible, Gospel Track, Talking With. And, hey, they've gone away unsaved. And leaving them opportunity to learn more and to grow more of, of the gospel, then say, well, here, just say this prayer because I, you know, I want to do the work and not God. And you will produce people who are not saved, thinking they are saved. And when you deal with them, oh, I said this prayer. Oh, you met somebody who was impatient in the gospel seed. And this impatience could be deadly. When you go out as a Christian, you plant and seed, it takes time. It takes tears. Jeremiah, one or two men ever followed him in his complete ministry. Baruch and the, I believe it was the Ethiopian. So when they see no results, they don't rest in the Lord. They don't wait on God. They go about with a stanza that let's come up with a program. Let's come up with, uh, we'll invite kids out. We'll have a bouncy house and we'll have arts and craft and we'll have a, a movie. We'll have a, a, a play. We'll have a skit. We'll have something to hurry up and get to people. So when we give that, that general invitation, anybody who comes walk down, all right, they're safe. I think we're going to find that as sour fruit. And many won't like what I just said, but that's tough. I think a lot of programs and things that, that the lads to see in church age use today are impatience. Romans chapter 5. They're impatience. Because we haven't seen anybody get saved. It's been such a long time. We don't want to count ourselves as failure. And yet, the success for the creatures getting the seed out the success is God. God gives the increase. I have planted, Paul's watered. God gives an increase. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Ouch. Yes, God's giving me hard times in my life. Yeah, all right. Rejoice evermore. My wife went in the hospital. Our dog bit her. We got to rejoice because there were things wrong with her that we did not know that she was wrong with her. So thank God the dog bit her and she was in the hospital because we now know things that we didn't know. It'd be painful to be bit by a dog, you know. Thank God we had the shots. Thank God it was our dog. Thank God. Also knowing that tribulation work is patience. If there's ever a time, and I'll admit to you, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I give myself too much out there to be a sinner. But when my wife and several times and myself, we have been in hospitals. And I don't think the care she's getting is she. I don't think she's getting the care that she, she's getting. I don't think she's getting enough. I don't think it's, it's time. I do not become patient. I become impatient and I sin. That tribulation should make me stronger. And then finally, when I went talking to doctors, and the problem I had this time was I just was getting no information. And the information I was getting was this information, that information, that information did not go with this information, that information didn't sound anything like that. I was just getting too many people telling me things. Finally, I, I sat down with a doctor. And it wasn't in pain, just listened to them, and they finally explained to me things and just waited it out. So, I know you don't need to hear about my wife, but this involves patience. Sunday morning, they found, uh, yeah, Sunday afternoon, they finally took the, the, the breathing tube out. 
I was impatient about that breathing tube. They finally took it out. Tonight, right now, they may be taking the, 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 the feeding tube out. So now we got something coming up that my wife is going to be going to PT and she's going to have stuff going and you got to contact the, the insurance company and all that. And God took care of the breathing tube. God's going to take care of the feeding tube. She's well. So let God take care of in prayer. You know, you pray about it. You ask, you, re you ask not, you receive not. So let God take care of the insurance and the, the PT. Tell God in prayer, what would you like? Say, God, please, we need help, this stuff and like that. And you know what? I got patience. I'm gonna let God do it. He's done it all along. So the tribulation and the problems brought patience. And then patience, experience. There have been people I know who had lost a spouse. That was a trying experience for me. That was tribulation. And that was patience. Times I wasn't patient. Times I was patient. And then I can go up to somebody who's lost a spouse and, and go up to them and, and say, you know, things are going to happen. Things This will happen. This will be your feeling. This is what's going to happen. This is what people are going to tell you. I can take what I have learned through the Lord. And I can help another Christian grow through tribulation, through parent, uh, through, uh, through tribulation, through patience, and through experience. Then experience hope. Oh, I hope. And you, you go to all these stores, you find all this hope, 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 hope. In order to get that hope, you got to go through tribulation, you got to go through patience, and you got to go through experience to get that hope. People want the hope without the tribulation. Not according to this verse. People want the hope, but they don't want to rest in the Lord. They don't want to wait for the Lord. That's where you become hopeless. Romans 8, 25. Romans 8, 25. But if we hope, there we go, hope, for that we see not, then do we, with patience, wait for it. I cannot force myself to go see Jesus. I can commit suicide, but will God allow the suicide to happen? And as an ability, I want to see Jesus and get out of this world. Because this world is not my home. What can I do but wait and not do anything stupid and seek every day to do something for the Lord properly? So I can't say I am completely impatient because I want the Lord to come. I want to see Jesus. And there are specific days in my life and there are, there are other days in my life I do something for Jesus. And I don't try to make my day as quicker with Jesus by suicide. I don't let my patience run out that much. Woke up today. I'm not in glory. Well, glory to God, I can do something more for Jesus and earn a crown. I can please the Lord today. I'm not going to please the Lord if I keep, oh, he's going to come, he's going to come. I'm going to sit, I'm going to do this lesson here. Gonna, oh, look, we got three moons and three days. And, oh, that means, no. And cause disassembly among the Christians by your panicking, your over eagerness, your over zeal, your impatience to have other Christians, you know, be impatient too. Just wait on the Lord. I can assume that God has a date somewhere set for him, that Jesus said no man can know the day, but God knows. And God's not going to rush that day just because of you. It's that plain and simple. So wait. Romans 12, 12. Romans 12, 12.
rejoicing in hope, another hope, with the word patience. Patience and tribulation, uh-oh, we saw that in Romans 5, 3, and 4. Look at the words we're starting to see, hope and tribulation. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually instant in prayer. So hope, patient tribulation should continue our prayer life. Now, nobody would, would be so wise and go, God, give me tribulation. But tribulation has a work in our life for the good. And how can something terrible, and there could be terrible tribulation upon a man or woman. And yet the oxymoronic of being that something good will come out of it is not oxy, or oxymoronic. It is something that God has planned and designed to bring you closer. And the fact is that maybe some tribulations, according to Hebrews, could be chastising because we have sinned against God and we are his children and he is our father, that he's trying to correct us for good. And if that tribulation, uh, yeah, that tribulation has to be for a correction for us not to do it no more and to learn what God expects from us for good. Then we get a hope, we get patience, and we learn how to pray. We trust and rest in the Lord in our tribulations. Now the flesh is weak, but the spirit is strong. The spirit is willing. This flesh will get in your way. But when we step outside of God, we sin. I already said that with Psalms... 37 7 when we unrest ourselves from God we sin and ought not to be so so Romans 12, 12 Romans 15 4 Romans 15 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's that hope again. Now the God of patience, God of patience. God's almighty, he's holy, he's righteous, he's the great I am, and he's the God of patience. Who would you think that would give you unpatience or impatience? What God do you think that would be? That would be Satan. The God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ. So the scriptures are written that they might comfort us, that they will give us hope, a better hope, that the God of patience is helping us. He's giving the scriptures to say, here, read all 66 books. And somewhere in that Bible, there is a sequence that you're going through, thereabouts, there like, and if you study and read it, God has put that there, God has put that person, God has put that man or woman in that Bible, that story, because it may be a reference to you, and through the scriptures, and through studying the scriptures, you might be comforted with hope, and wait, and rest in the Lord. For uh, 2 Corinthians 6 4. 2 Corinthians 6 4. But in all things, approving, that's the only time that word shows up, ourselves as the ministers of God. Going out, preach the gospel, pray for others, helping others. That's the minister. In much patience. Oh much patience, afflictions, oh, we don't like that, and necess necessities, and distresses, tribulation problems, and stripes, 
in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fasting. Oh, that list just sounds so great. Oh, afflictions, distress, stripes, that's being beaten. Going to jail, tumults, little riots because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our, so that's the apostles' life, ourselves. And when they were beaten, they were whipped, they were jailed, and they were criticized, they were yelled at, they were tortured, they were put all kinds of tribulations, afflicted by unbelievers. They did it with much patience. And when you have a public ministry, and you are tormented, you are heckled, and you got scorners, and you got fools, and you've got people who hate God, you've got people who claim to love God, and you got religions, and you've got the world, and, and they're just trying to get together to put you down. You've got to handle it with much patience and rest in the Lord, because if you don't, you're going to give yourself a bad name. You're going to give the characteristic of Jesus Christ a horrible name, and you're going to disprove Christianity as what the Bible has. If you lose your patience. It is not good for a Christian to be preaching the gospel or going door to door with the gospel and having to punch somebody in the nose because they could not rest in the Lord and put away their anger. Just keep strong with the gospel and it's going to end. And you want the situation, you want the ministry that God's given you, you want it to end in peace. And I've had times where I got angry in ministry, and I've sinned. And I've had other times where just, you know, this guy's going to finally give up. He will give up. And a lot of times the ones that I've dealt with, when you don't give them the attention that they wet their diapers over, they will go away when they don't get any more attention. You gotta patiently just wait them out. So that's kind of interesting. Colossians 111. Colossians 111. Strengthen, build up with all might, according to the glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with with joyfulness. In our weakness that we have as sinners of God's glorious and power. All not much we learn all much all patience. We're to do it with joy. Oh. It's not coming quick enough. We're, we're, we're not resting in the Lord. Uh, we got to do that with much. And we got to do that joyfully. And I don't know. Down here at Daytona Beach, I mean, if you're going to get in your car, you're going to travel from A to B. And if there are intersections, you're going to come across every single light is going to be red. And I'm not kidding. There are times we go 22 miles to church and you will hit every single red light. That tries the patience. And there's days I do it joyfully. Yep. And stop. Somebody reads the car, sees the bumper stickers. Glory to God. But problem is the patient impatience is you may be too much in a hurry. Leave earlier. So, First Thessalonians one three. First Thessalonians one three. For the hope. Did you know hope is attached to patience in the Bible? And patience is attached to hope. But you got to have that tribulation. Then comes patience. Then it comes experience. Then hope shows up. 
What did I say? For, I lost my plate. First Thessalonians 1 3. No. I'm in Colossians. First Thessalonians 1 3. I just read Colossians 1. What did I read? 5. <laughs> I'm sorry. You people. What is he reading? First Thessalonians 1 3. No. That was a little side, good side note there. I was in the wrong place. First Thessalonians 1 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, faith, and labor of love, love, and patience of hope. There's hope again. In our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father. So I've got faith, hope, on a plaque hanging on my wall that I bought at the store. All right, faith, love, and patience, and hope. How about the labor of love? Are you out there doing something for the Lord Jesus Christ that will be a benefit to others and not yourself? You see the work of faith? Work. People hate that four-letter word. Labor. They hate that word. Then comes patience. Then patience of hope. In, inside our Lord Jesus Christ. As God watches us in the sight of God the Father. God is seeing our workers' faith, our labor of love, and the patience of our hope. Does he see that inside you? For God to be pleased in what you're doing. Are you laboring because you want to show yourself off before somebody? Are you laboring because somebody makes you do it? Are you doing the work because, oh, I hate this. I wish I didn't have to do this. Oh, man. It, uh. That's in God's sight, and that's not patience of hope. You're hoping the job will be finished with. You're hoping you can get out of it. You'll be hoping that, hey, I can't get, get rid of this. But that's the wrong hope. That's the wrong hope. Let's hope I can get in the right place. Uh, First Thessalonians 5.14. First Thessalonians 5.14. This is a good, interesting thing to, to read in Thessalonians chapter 5. We're not, we don't have time to go over it, but this is so great. The 5.14, now we exhort you. Lift you up, explain to you, help you. Brethren, save people. Warn them that are unruly. You cause troubles. You're just problematic. Comfort the feeble mind. They just can't handle things. They just can't get over. They got trials. They got tribulations. They got troubles. They got problems. Support the weak. Oh, I can't do it. I can't go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Go for it. Come on. Do it. Go. Be patient toward all men saved or lost. Got that person over there. He don't like me because of my ministry. He don't like me because I stand up for Jesus Christ. Oh, I just get patience toward all men. Saved or lost. You blow your patience. You blow your testimony of a Christian. You blow your testimony for Christians. You blow your testimony for Jesus Christ. And you blow the, the possible testimony for a lost man to believe on Jesus Christ. Remember we said that, that patiently puts the seed out? Listen, when you have a public ministry, not all the ground is going to be, oh, look, it's so great. I'm so glad you'd be here. Some of that ground is going to be rock. Some of that ground is going to be quicksand. Some of that sound is going to be unfair ground. Some of that ground is going to be angry ground. Earthquake. Trembling. They're not going to like you. Patient towards all men. That's scripture right there. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with that. Second Thessalonians 1 4. Second Thessalonians 1 4. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God, not the church of God, churches of God, 
for your patience and faith. Uh oh, I wish I was a period there because it says, in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. So here's the patience, here's the faith in persecutions and tribulations. Love, hope, joy on a placard, but that you never see any tribulation on that placard. And yet tribulation brings patience. That's why patience doesn't show up with love, joy, and hope. Because we can't put a sign that says patience, because according to the Bible, with patience comes hope. Yay! But we've also seen patience come with tribulation. Oh! We're not going to sell this thing for $5.99. Someone's going to buy it when it has such a bad word as tribulation. Because who glories in tribulation? Come on now. Well, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. One page over. Rejoice evermore. Verse 18, 1 Thessalonians 5. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, I got troubles. I got problems. Oh, everything's just on me. Thank God. Glory to God. Help me, God. <laughs> Lord, I need help. And when things start lightening up and the, and the dark clouds start going away and the blue sky is just starting to come up, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Lord, forgive me where I've sinned during this storm. Forgive me where I'm going against you during this storm. But I see the skies are clearing. Thank you. That's hard. That's hard. Very hard. Second Second Thessalonians three five. And the Lord direct your hearts unto the love of God. Oh, everybody just loves love. And into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we've seen this waiting of Christ. We've seen this waiting for Jesus Christ, and it would be assumed so far written to Christians. That there is one thing we're to do is go out in all the world and preach the gospel and get the seed out. There is something else as a Christian that we ought to be wanting. We ought to be wanting Jesus Christ to come. Though we are not given that promise that he will come when we're living, he will come whether we're living or whether we die, he is coming. We are to look forward for the coming of Jesus Christ for the church and we're to wait patiently and don't go out writing books and writing stuff and putting videos and and cds and whatever stuff will be when you hear this oh you know date in the rapture and when you do that jesus christ is going to come on this date this you're showing your impatience you're showing your sin and that ought not to be so god will come when God comes. First Thessalonians 3 3. Now, this is the office of a bishop. Not giving the wine, good. No striker, good. Not greedy of filthy liqueur, good. But all these negative things do not be, but patient. Patience is a attribute, attribute of a man who's going to go into ministry. And be head of a church. You're going to get problems from the people of that church. You're going to get situations from the church. The world's going to come into your church. And the, the bills of the church. And the aggravation of the church. And you're going to have to handle that properly. In a timely fashion. And you can't lose your marbles. You can't fret. You got to rest in the Lord. You got to put your faith in the Lord. Because you may not be able to make it come quicker. Oh, just trying to start a church and no one's here. Oh, why don't we have a stage? Why don't we have movies? Why don't we do programs? Why don't we do car washes? Why don't we do yards? Why don't we do whatever we can to get the world into the church? But the world is not the church. 
And if you're to do it that way and go in patience and go about the world's way, you're going to have a building with a bunch of people who are going to be watching you, and they're going to be worldly ends. And they're not going to grow in Christ because you're going to have a majority of the people who are worldly ends. Why? Because you would not patiently wait for the Lord to grow you and your church. You would not wait for the Lord for that seed to be waiting patiently for that seed to grow and that seed to, to spark up life. You went about here to say this prayer and I'll come here. I'll make sure you come here. No forsaken assembly of the other church. And, you know, give, 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 do, do, do this. Uh, no. Lord God, I believe you, you have me have a church and we're going to start this church by the belief that, that you've given me in within time. You will give me people. Within time, I will lose people. Patience. Sometimes lack of patience would end to anger. And be, be angry, but sin not. Sin not. As 1 Timothy 3.3, 3, so 1 Timothy 6.11. 6.11. But thou, O man of God, these, excuse me, flee these things and follow after righteousness, be right, be holy, godliness, just like God, faith, there it is, love, there's the placard, patience, that's not in the placard, meekness. That meekness is when you got trials and tribulations, you got troubles, and you just. You don't fold, you don't break, you don't limp. You go, you do still what is right. And you wait it out. You wait on the Lord. You wait on the Lord. First Timothy. Second Timothy 2.24. Second Timothy 2.24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, saved or lost, the ones that are your enemies and the ones that love you. Apt to teach. We're going to have a Bible lesson. We're going to have Bible Sunday school. We're going to teach you the Bible. Patience again. Oh, what what if we get a, a Sunday school and we put five dollar bills under the table under the, the the seat cushion, or we give out tootsie rolls for them to know their Bible verses, or we you know we'll have a a a twenty fat flag weekend, or we'll have a you know we'll go to the zoo, Jesus parade kind of thing. That's not patient. That's let's do what we can to have people, but not waiting on God to have people. Listen, there's a much compromise in to have a big mega church that, that makes God sick. You ought to know where that reference is. So, 2 Timothy 3.10. 3.10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, Paul's doctrine, Paul's manner of life, Paul's purpose, Paul's faith, Paul's long-suffering, Paul's charity, Paul's patience, Paul's persecutions, Paul's afflictions. Haven't we seen through this study of patience a couple words we do not like? Tribulation and affliction. We've seen the faith. We've seen the hope. And you don't even see hope there. We know Paul had hope. They must have sold out on the hope placards that day when Paul wrote this. Well, I see a faith in one over there. I see God is love over there. And as for me and my house, well, I see those. You can buy those placards, but do you believe those placards? 
I've got one right there. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I've had to throw someone out of this house because they said they weren't going to serve the Lord. And then they got right in the Lord. That plain and simple. Plain and simple. Titus 2.2. Two. Titus 2.2. Two. Titus chapter 2 verse 2. That the aged men, the old men, the elderly, be sober. That means serious. And also no alcohol. That sounds good. Brave. Temperate. You got a moderate temperance. You don't get too hot. You don't get too cold. Sound in faith. There it is. In charity. Yay. I guess Paul was an aged man because look at patience. That's exactly what Paul just told Timothy. You know of my doctrine, you know of my soberity, you know of my soundness, you know of my faith, you know of my charity and patience. Do you know what an aged man in Christ should do when he's aged and has grown and has matured and one of the maturity things is to be patient? And if you have not patience and you've grown old in the Lord, you've failed. What Paul said here, the aged man, you have patience. I'm working on mine with the Lord's help. Hebrews 12, 1. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compressed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay every weight, all your sin, take off the sin in your life. Take off all those weights that are making you tired in your Christian walk. And the sin which does so easily beset us, that sin that is so great in my life and your life, it's so easy to do that sin. Get rid of it. And let us run without the weights, without the sin, with patience, the race that is set before us. Oh, I know God's called me to ministry. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to study the Bible. Oh, I got to hurry up. I got to drop out of school because I got to hurry up and start a ministry because I know God wants me to start a ministry. I got to hurry up. Oh, I know God wants me to have a family, so I'm just going to find a woman, any woman right now, and just go start have a family. Oh, oh. And then you jump the God, gun on God's life for you, for you. When God is ready for you to have a ministry, he will give that ministry to you. When God's ready to have you have a spouse, if you wait on God, if you rest in the Lord, if you have the patience, God will bring that person into your life and things will be properly and orderly done. God is an orderly God. He doesn't do it haphazardly, and he doesn't do things by quitting. I have gone through seminary of learning the Bible, and it did not take me four years. It took me multiple years to get the diploma of being a doctor of, of theology, but I didn't quit. I have got these broken fragments of ministry that God's given me, and I'm not going to go about and sell hot dogs and free hamburgers to get people to come and hear the word of God, and I'm not going to do the worldly ways of growing the things of God. I'm going to grow those ministries in the way what God has me to grow in God's timing and just wait it out and see the blessings and the wonders that God does. And if I don't have 3,000 million people who will sit in front of me, I've had at least one, I've had at least two, I've had at least three, I've had at least at least six people who have sat in front of me with the Bible being taught, and I'd rather have six people sent by God than have 200 billion, quadrillion, quadrillion people sent by the devil. I'd rather have the Holy Spirit come in the Bible study and grow us in the Bible study, have great fellowship in God, than having Satan in the front pew Amen in what I have to say for the worldly ends. 
Whatever God has you to do, do it with patience and let God give you the blessings. Not the world, not Satan. And Hebrews, James 1 3. James 1 3. James 1 3. Knowing this, got to know this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Oh, there's that four letter word again. But patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire. That's the only place that word shows up. Wanting nothing. Trials and tribulations. The trying of our faith worketh patience. You're not going to get patience by call this 1-800 number and give us 1995. We'll send you a packet of patience. Come on down to our church and we'll give you boxes and boxes of patience. Come into the comfort of our church with the padded pews and electric music and all the kinds of disco and all the wonderful things that make you feel love and all that, and you'll, you won't get the patience. But when God puts a fire on your butt, when God puts a rod under your butt, when God says, okay, let's give him the heat, and you go through that heat, and you walk with God, and you trust upon God, and you rely on God, you pray to God, and you just say, Lord, I want to give up. Lord, I want to go ahead. But Lord, this is where patience. Then comes experience. Then comes the hope. You can't break God's chain of patience. Tribulation, patience, experience, hope. Too many people want to go in there with a modern Bible and erase tribulation. Cut out that experience. All right, patience and hope. I can sell that for $5.99. Ridiculous. James. I read all that. James 5 7. Be patient. Oh! Therefore, brethren, brethren, brethren. That's Christians. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. See that again? We're looking at the coming of the Lord. What is it? Wait for the Lord. Don't, I was going to say hesitate. Don't hasten the Lord to come earlier than he's going to come. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit. There's that fruit again that we saw in Matthew. Oh, excuse me, Luke. In Luke 8, 15, there's the fruit of the earth. And have long patience for it. If you go out in a public ministry, you're not going to see on the major hold fruits that night, that day. We have been at the farmer's market here at Daytona Beach four or five years now. You say, how many people have openly knelt down with you and received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Zero. We have people say, Where, where's your gathering? It is myself, it is my wife, and it's my daughter. We had a few people come and join, but because of the preaching of hell, they left. Because, you know, the torments, they didn't stick around. You say, how many people have gotten saved from that ministry? I have no idea. I have no idea. How many people support you? Many. How many people hate you? Much. Well, why don't you just tone down your message? Why don't you just do, do what everybody tells you to do? Just shut up and be nice and just preach the love of God. And then they'll get saved and they're not really saved. And if I cut out hell, then there's, there's really no place for them not to go. And then they say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they'll be saved. You know, you're not being saved from hell because there is no hell because... And, you know, you got false security, you got false salvation, you got a false Bible, and I'm not going the false way. I'm going to preach Jesus Christ saves, I'm going to preach the gospel, I'm going to preach about heaven, I'm going to preach about hell, and I'll let God give the increase. I'm either planting or I'm watering, according to scriptures. I'm going to wait for the Lord. 
And one day when I get the glory, if the farmer's market in Daytona Beach has any fruit, God may only wait to me at the judgment seat of Christ to show forth that fruit. It's, aren't you going to come up with a program? Aren't you going to? No. No. The gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. No bounce houses, no vacation, Bible, none of that mess. Preach the gospel. Plain and simple. It's what the Bible says. Verse 8, let ye, uh, be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. There's that coming of the Lord again. Be, that's a command. Be ye patient. That's a command. Verse 10, take my brethren, the prophets, who has spoken in the name of the Lord, for example, of suffering, affliction, and of patience. That's why patience is not a popular subject for a CD or a, a cassette tape, if you remember what those are. Because when you preach patience, you gotta preach suffering and affliction. And many people say, I don't, I don't ask God for patience because trials and tributes are going to come. Yes, that's true. But have, haven't we read for you to be patient? Haven't you, we read that you ought to be patient? Haven't we read that patience is what God wants us to be? And then maybe the tribu tri tribu uh, tribulations and the trials and the afflictions and the, and the that God does send for we to get that patience. It's terrible. It's horrible. But don't we want that hope? Yeah. Tribulation, patience, experience. Then comes the hope. Listen, the problems and trials you, you have right now, once you're done with them, they're in the past. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Eleven, behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. Job was kicked by the devil. Job was kicked by his wife. Job was kicked by his three friends. And he waited it out 42 chapters. And we don't know what the time frame of that was. We say 42 chapters. What, what, what if it was months? Weeks? Days? And yet Job, he got angry. Oh, I wish I had died in the womb. I wish you guys would shut up, you quacks. But in the end, God turned the captivity of Job. And what he lost, he got doubled. We're going to stop. That's it right there. They will end the study of patience with Job. If there was a man who, who had trials and tribulations and troubles, it was Job. And if there's ever a man to study what, what must I do with patience, study Job. 